Hey, what's up, y'all? What's Rob from the ProRest Blog here, www.prorestblog.blogspot.com. Hey, I'm back. Long time since I've done pretty much anything on this site, but, uh, you know, it's 2017. I wanted to review something. Why not? Uh, today's show, CWF Mid-Atlantic Worldwide, episode 86, from January 4th, 2017. Um, I've never seen this promotion before. I actually don't know a single thing about it, but I saw it in a thread and I wanted to do some shows today. So I said, hey, let's check it out. And uh, here we are. All right. First match was uh, the Rising Generation League Championship. It was Dirty Daddy versus Kane Justice. Uh, Kane Justice definitely has a Team Taz thing going on here. Circuit ECW 1997. Um, he's like a judo dude, and he has his kind of recruits with him, and he has his uh, judo sensei working with him too. And he does pretty much MMA stuff, which is cool with me. And his opponent was Dirty Daddy. Um, I don't know what this dude's supposed to be. I think he's supposed to be like some kind of Elvis or uh, what's his face? I can't even think of it, but like an Elvis or something or someone kind of flashy and goofy. But um, he really comes across as like a No Way Jose or uh, like a bad Carlito or something like that. And the story they said during the match was that he was from the 1980s and he got blackballed from the NWA. And somehow I, I didn't stick around to see this, but he used like a future time machine and was able to become a rookie now in 2017. I don't know Wh whatever, you know, I'm not going to go into it. Um, so anyway, the match, uh, I was really quick. It wasn't that great. Um, Dirty Daddy is not very good at all. He throws some awful strikes, and you could just tell when he's on. Like he doesn't, he can't work. He can't work like from behind or like when he's not the one on offense. Really, he he doesn't look legit, and it's really hard to buy anything he does. Um, the main highlights here were uh, actually Dirty Daddy did get one shot in, which I liked. He really belted uh, his opponent off the apron, and. Um, his opponent, Kane, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, Kane Justice. He, um, what's the move called? He did, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but he, uh, he, like, grabbed him and then he dropped him right on his head, like an MK Ultra, like Sterling James Keenan used to do back in the day. And that was only for a two, which I was surprised about. And, uh, Dirty Daddy kicked out. And then pretty much right after, uh, Kane Justice did, like, a version of the AT lock, which is basically just a hammer lock from behind, and, uh, picked up the win, uh, pretty quick match. Dirty Daddy doesn't have a lot of good strikes, and um, it was just too quick, really, to say anything more, unfortunately. Next up, they had the Dawson brothers, uh, Zane and Dave Dawson, versus Devin Dalton and uh, Walter Eaton. Uh, the Dawsons are kind of like your Balls Mahoney, fat boy type of guys who look like punk rockers or, you know, into alternative rock and metal and that stuff, which is cool. And uh, Devin Dalton, I don't know what his deal is, and uh, Walter Eaton, the, the name doesn't really sound like what he is, but he's kind of like another kind of heavy metal type of dude who is really scrappy and will like just jump into things, and I, and I enjoyed that. Um, the match was also pretty quick. The heels, which were the Daltons, they, excuse me, the Dawsons, I'm calling them the Daltons here. Um, the Dawsons worked them over with uh, a lot of cheating and eye gouges and, you know, all that stuff. And they did a couple of big Power Man moves, which I liked. But um, they ended up winning the match here with a huge lariat that I loved from Dave Dawson. And that was really about it to it. Uh, not, a, not a lot going on, mostly because of the length, which you'll see is kind of a theme in this show. And uh, Dawson's got the win here, and that was really about it. Um, like I said, I don't watch this promotion very much. So the next segment had Brad Attitude talking what appeared to be from his uh, ki kid's room because it had all these like pro wrestling figures and stuff like that. And he was talking about Trevor Lee and he said like Trevor Lee attended his wedding and um, he helped uh, Trevor Lee get probably a title match or a, t or a title win at the previous show. Like I said, I sound uh, uninformed because I kind of am about this. And um, he got mad at Lee for not picking him as an opponent when Lee had the chance to choose one, I suppose. And it seemed like he turned on him from what I've read. Uh, I really got out of it because of the where this was filmed because it looked like it was filmed in a kid's bedroom. So I, I couldn't really get into it as anything serious, unfortunately. 
Next up was uh, Eric Andrews versus Smith Garrett. Um, right out the back, uh, Garrett got destroyed by someone who I think was like Osirius or something of that nature. I looked on their website because I couldn't figure it out and it didn't really tell me, so I don't know what this guy's name is, but he hit like a cool different version of the Unprettier and he wiped out Garrett and I thought that was going to be it because they had the announcer, they had him asking for the 10 count, start the count so he would get counted out and um, the ref was going along with it, but of course, this is the 2007s now, 2017s, and we got to have people come back, and uh, Garrett ca came back, made the 10 count, uh, wasn't quite sting rude from the 1991 clash, which I partially reviewed in a previous segment here on Pro Rest Blog that I really liked, but it was what it was. Um, actually, Garrett got a few moves in, a little bit more than I wanted to see him get, because I would have liked to have seen Eric Andrews already use the advantage and really just pound on him. And uh, Eric Andrews got the win with a really nice lariat and then a, you know, full Nelson slam. Um, I don't care who you are, but full Nelson slams really don't look good, especially if they're standing. Uh, no one's really been able to pull off a decent one, so I don't really blame him for that. Um, that was really about it here. So Andrews got the win and uh, getting ready to move on to the next match. The next match was the Mid-Atlantic Tag Titles with the Sandwich Squad. How can you not love a team named the Sandwich Squad? I think that's awesome. I think we can all support a f someone eating a sandwich and enjoying it. That's just my take of uh, Aaron Biggs and Mecha Mercenary. I, I do like that name. Versus the Storm of Entrails, Schlack, and Dan O'Hare. Um, man, Schl Schlack is pretty good-looking pro wrestler. Like, I mean that in a gay way or anything, but... I, th I think he looks like a pro wrestler, and I think WWE w might get into him. He's really built, all tattooed up, and kind of looks like a lunatic or like a prison guy that it seems like he's supposed to be. And uh, Dan O'Hare is a pretty big dude, too, and he looks like kind of your average motorcycle dude. You know, tattoos, big beard, wears the bandana, you know that drill. Uh, Aaron Biggs is this big, fat, black guy. Uh, not too much different from, like, Big Cat or something like that from old WCW or... Um, and he, they were the faces here in Mecha Mercenary, and uh, Mercenary and Biggs are just two really big dudes, and uh, that's their gimmick, and I like it. They started the match off. They had a they had like an old timey announcer, like uh, you know, with the with the straw hat and the USA colors, and uh, it, it, I guess it was supposed to be one of the guys at the Coney Island hot dog eating contest. Um, if you've never seen that, every 4th of July in America, we have a hot dog eating contest, and they make it out to be really old-timey, and uh, that was, and their announcer does that that shtick, and that's what the guy did here. Um, he made some food puns, which I couldn't really make out, which is a shame, because I would have liked it, and um, yeah, and that's how they started off. Um, pretty, you know, standard title match, uh, a little bit fast, um, Biggs worked as the babyface here in peril. And the heels worked over his legs, which is totally fine with me, no problem. And uh, it was just mostly them beating up on Biggs for a while. Biggs eventually got the hot tag into Mecha Mercenary. And um, from there, that was it. Uh, Me Mecha Mercenary, and um, he, hit, he hit some awesome forearms that I did GIF on there. And him and Biggs got... Uh, they got Schlack uh, Sandwich, which is awesome. And the move is called the Hero Sandwich, which I think is doubly awesome. I, I like food-related wrestling stuff. That's a, that's a new thing, but uh, I'm into it. And, um, yeah, what uh, what all happened here was after uh, after Biggs got the hot tag on a mercenary, um, mercenary started just destroying the heels. And uh, he actually beat them up so much that their manager jumped in, some female gothic type of manager. Pretty cute, by the way. A little bit heavy, but, you know. Um, anyway. And uh, they um, they did that, and she jumped in. And then CWF has, like, some female announcer or something. Like, some kind of figurehead or face. And she, um, she jumped in and actually hit their female manager, which was the goth girl. And um, they went at it. And then uh, that's when uh, they hit the hero sandwich on Slack. And... Um, to finish it, Biggs, and he's a big dude, he's got to be six foot something, and over 300 pounds, easy, he did a Thez press, I, I've never, I've never loved that move, but I like that here, because he was a big dude, and you know that stuff hurt, because he's so big, and um, Mercenary just finished it with a big man elbow after, and you know, when you're a big dude, this is one of the things I like about wrestling, 
if you're a big dude, everything you do usually looks legit, and you can get away with, like, not doing bigger stuff, because everything you do do looks very strong and powerful, and I bought into all of it. Um, I really liked it. I, I thought it was, you know, really good, campy pro wrestling. Uh, I'm always going to mark for some fat guys who actually look legit. And, um, yeah, it was just good stuff. The faces were pretty good. The crowd was totally into all of it. And they added some extra stuff in here. Um, this was the match of this show for me, and I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, definitely serviceable main event, uh, just like you used to back in the day. Good stuff, and I enjoyed it. Um, and afterwards, to close the show, they announced that there would be a like, tag team title match coming up in the show, and the Hardy Boys would be coming in. So, uh, to wrap it up, um, the show was fun overall. Uh, all the matches I thought were a bit short. I thought they could have got a lot more out of what they did. Um, the crowd loved it, though, so I was thinking, you know, while the matches were a little bit shorter than I wanted, they didn't stick around long enough to be bad or really get stale. So, that might kind of be a good thing about that format. And, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, like, say you gotta go out of your way to see this show, but I, I thought the main event was really good, and... It, it's just a nice kind of way of the way wrestling used to be, and I and I like that. Um, you know, the crowd was hot all show. The commentators were pretty good. They, they really went for, like, a sports type of build here, and they referenced a whole bunch of back stuff that I thought, uh, you know, made the show better. And, um, yeah, I, I give it the thumbs up. I would, uh, I would check out these guys again. I don't know if I will because y'all know me and I'm lazy and I just got other things going on, but... I give it a thumbs up. Uh, I, I do recommend it. And uh, very different pro wrestling than you get from a lot of the indies. And different in a good way. All right, guys. Wrapping it up here. If you want to check out the picks and gifs of the show. Um, I did it through YouTube, so they aren't as pretty as usual. But uh, it works. Did it at www.prowrestblog.blogspot.com. And uh, it's your boy Rob. I'll be back again some point, I'm sure, doing more wrestling. And until then, catch you later. And uh, have a good 2017.